than ever it's the unofficial 40 from soonerscoop.com now here's the entire sooner scoop crew carrie josh eddie and bob all right welcome back it is the unofficial 40 christmas edition as the guys are coming to us live from atlanta georgia site of the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, where the Sooners are getting ready to uh, take on the number one LSU Tigers. And uh, first off, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Uh, hope you're having a great one. Uh, spend some time with the family. And uh, Merry Christmas to... Uh, I'm not going di- to... I'm not going to um, try and call you our elves or something. That's stupid. Um, <laughs> Good. Eddie and Bob I'll joining us from Atlanta. <laughs> I know. I said I wasn't. <laughs> our, our two Santas. How about that? Would you go for uh, Mrs. Claus? That's kind of creepy. I don't. I think we should cancel Santa. <laughs> cancel culture. Oh God. Uh, welcome, guys. Uh, how are you, how are we doing today, Eddie? I think we should start with you. Doing good. After I saw the fireball pictures last night. Oh yeah. We had a good night. We had a good. We have a. We had a good time. I'm so uh, against Fireball. It's just. It was tasty. It was delicious. Oh, I've Only had it. Night that people didn't have to sleep. So yeah, people took advantage of it. Today sure. is a non-media day. Um, they will be practicing today, but uh, no media. And it's been kind Correct. of interesting. Uh, you know, I am back here in Norman. I will not be covering a bowl game for the first time in 20 years. I'll be honest with you. At times, my skin is crawling at the thought of this. Um, but I feel like I've been there because every time Eddie's camera is on, I'm looking through what he's shooting at. And it's only been football-related activity so far. Yeah, I'm, we haven't had... Uh, it, it, there really hasn't... It's kind of been weird. Like We've been down here for three days, and... It's been kind of weird just as far as there hasn't been a whole lot going on. I mean, it's uh, we've been out to one practice. Uh, that was for a very limited amount of time uh, over at Turner Field where uh, Georgia State plays their games, which I, that place was actually pretty nice. It was, was cool. Kind of, yeah. Was cool. Kind of surprised. It, it was cool. Uh, how, good, how good that place looks after the renovation. They pumped a lot of money into it, or they had to have. But just from like a... From an access standpoint, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not saying that the Peach Bowl is bad because I, they've run this bowl very well. Everything that we've, from the uh, hospitality room to the, uh, the, the work rooms downstairs, all that stuff's been really good. It's just we haven't really talked to a whole lot of players, and the players that we have talked to, that's uh, the thing. it's just like they, there hasn't been a whole lot out there like, outside of the, the biggest news is the confirmation of the suspensions. That's and the, that was the, the very the first biggest news. Yeah, that's the very first thing that's that happened. It. And it was kind of strange because usually, you know, like Ed Orgeron held a press conference and that was done for LSU on day one. And then they practiced that day because I think they might have come in the night before. But then OU comes in on, God, what day was it? Tuesday? Monday? Mon- Monday. It was Monday. Monday afternoon. They come in on Basically Monday. like within an hour. Yeah, they come in on Monday. Lincoln Riley has a press conference. And then they trot Neville Gallimore out there and then Nick Basquin out there. But I would say this, guys. Like I noticed, Dan Wolken had a tweet about, uh, you know, how f- you know freewheeling the LSU players were, and then how uh, miserable the OU players seemed. And I think most people that, in the OU media were like, "That's just kind of how they are, Dan." That's the, uh, that. Welcome to our lives. Yeah, yeah. Could, and that you, that's been the consensus so far. Just talking to Peach Bowl people and the running the hospitality and media workroom. They they couldn't understand how outgoing all the LSU people were throughout yesterday and, and just OU looks just miserable now, I don't know that's not gonna mean anything towards Saturday but it's just an interesting observation when you get out of your own bubble because we are always around the Sooners and mm-hmm. hearing other people say what well, we think we've been seeing throughout the last three four months you know, those, I mean they they the players kind of treat their media obligations like their head coach does and I, yeah, I know that it's from the top not down. people that yeah. are gonna gonna like that but that's just it is what it is it's not a bad thing i don't think i mean 
I think we would appreciate it if it was a little bit different, but <laughs> it's it kind of is what it is. They're not. It's not going to change. It's not going to. Uh, it's not going to affect how they play the game on Saturday. So it, it's more of a peek behind the curtain, let, let us bitch for a second type thing. Well, you know, and, and I'm not down there, but, you know, I've, I've seen every second of, you know, media that there has been. Uh, and, I you know, I'll say this. Like, to me, the story of each team is LSU. They I don't know if this was a plan of theirs, but they've done nothing but be complimentary toward OU. Basically, uh, they haven't even given a chance for the Big 12 defense perception questions to take hold. Like, you know, they're, they're, Steve Emsminger came out and said that this is probably the fastest defense that we've seen all season. Uh, everybody's been very complimentary from LSU's towards OU on both sides of the ball. Uh, C.D. Lamb has come out and said that he's looking forward to, you know, going against DBU. I mean, that was his term. I know Bobby took some heat on Twitter over that, but that really was what C.D. Lamb said. He he termed, he tabbed them DBU. But I would I would just say that, yeah, OU is kind of just – and why should they be friendly toward the media? I mean, the media gives them no chance because of people sure. uh, like Jonathan Vilma and uh, Jim Mora Dummer and – I, I, he's not junior. He's just Jim Moore Dummer. Um, so, like, what what should they enjoy about the media? So no one is giving them a chance in this game. It's very much, and Bobby, maybe I've read this wrong, but it seems like Oklahoma, and Carrie, I think you've kind of insinuated it on Twitter, uh, it, it's almost like they it's, everybody's just patting OU on top of the head. Like, you're lucky to be here. Have fun. Don't waste these next four days. Then you got to go home. They're like, don't get LSU injured, so we don't have a good national championship game. Yeah, that's that's probably the all time take out there. Is the guy that wrote the opinion piece or the the column? Uh, I think it was out of the Advocate or something in New Orleans that uh, Hilaire shouldn't play so he can be rested for the national championship. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that, that Just, that's it, a it's cinema. Kind of funny how it, yeah. It's like they can yeah, win this I mean, game it, even without their star running back. So. Let's save him for a great national championship game. Yeah, they're petting Oklahoma on the head. I, it's uh, and it's I think even I, I think Lincoln Riley's taking that personally. Like he does not like all the the work they put into promoting their program in recruiting and the in the battles that he's out there trying to win. Like the last thing that he wants is to be known as the the team that can't win the playoff. Like he doesn't want yeah. his program developing this per or he doesn't want a perception developing around his program that they're just not one of the big boys that they're just they're the they're they're at the little kids table every year they come to this thing no i i don't think that there's any doubt about that and you know i there's only one way to change that perception isn't there yeah. that's to win a football game uh they just they have their work cut out for them this weekend and you know i i would like to present a way that Oklahoma could win this game and believe in it. I just, I don't know if I can. I mean, the thing about it is there's really only one year where they just came out and stunk up the joint. I mean, that was last year. Yeah. The Georgia game yeah, the Georgia was an all time classic. Were, the Clemson game, they were ahead at halftime and then they, they were just, ahead at halftime. Yeah. So, I mean, if the, but I, I don't know, you just get the sense that like, Lincoln is very serious, and I don't want to make too much of it, but that whole thing yesterday where you had your camera on him and he was you know, getting mad because he couldn't get Mike Houck's attention to cut off practice so he could start the real practice, like, he's into this thing. And uh, I've heard some other things. I've heard uh, that uh, Lincoln's a little tight in terms of uh, maybe he's really concerned about practice and where it is and if he's going to do it the same place so you can keep people from spying on him, you might just keep moving it around. It's it's that Venom package. He doesn't want anyone to see it. <laughs> God. If, I think, if, I think if that they kind of run stuff a package so with, ridiculous. If they run a package with Spencer Rattler, I mean, we're just going to celebrate all offseason. No, the backman told you that it was going to happen. It's going to happen. The Venom package has been put in. <laughs> that stuff is so weird to me, though. Like, why he's so paranoid paranoia. about yeah. that? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think he just this wants is, to win so bad. I mean. Yeah, this is how paranoid they are. And, I, you know, I, I don't know if it was like LSU like this, but 
we could not get off the bus yesterday yeah. at Turner Field. And you we were outside the, the facility. Like, you couldn't even <laughs> – there wasn't like a wall or a fence you could look through. Correct. It was a giant concrete structure between you and the players. Correct. It just kind of strange. Kind of kind of, uh, kind of, of just over the top, in my opinion. But uh, it's, it, it's almost kind of funny in a way, too. Well, look, it, I mean, this is what it's going to come down to. All this stuff and – being surly with the media or not, you know, not all cheery and happy and Lincoln being, you know, kind of paranoid and secretive and his team, if they don't come out and play well, that's on him and you can rip him till the cows come home. But if they go out there focused and they are running around and, you know, just blowing people up on defense and, and you're like, holy crap, look at this team. Like then Lincoln, everything that you do. I mean, that's the thing you micro, you, you you try and kind of um, you know just just uh, micro opinionate every little thing that's going to happen this week. And if they play well, yeah. m- you know he's a genius. He's a he's a he's he's a game prep genius. And if they come out and they play tight, well, Lincoln's young and he has to realize that you got to let these kids have a little bit of fun every once in a while. You almost wonder if it's a too much of an overcorrection off off of what happened last year. Like maybe they were too loosey goosey for his. I wondered his the same thing. And then it's it's twenty eight nothing before you even blink, and so now he's switching it up. I think well, your I defense think just really sucked. With... I mean, I think that's really what it is. Yeah, it's, your defense just really sucked bad. for the last two years, they were, Lincoln. They are historically bad. I I think that a lot of it has to do with just kind of the attitude of this team, and I I don't know how much you want to credit in a way. Uh, Jalen Hurts for kind of his mantra that we, you know, I remember going back in all the way back into August, kind of laughing about in a way. Uh, just it, this, this never be satisfied, uh, always be working to win the day, bullshit type stuff. Like and, you're, um, you're stuck in the middle of a Nike commercial. Your life is yeah, is, kind is of. Actually, I you're mean, actually way, living a Nike commercial. Yeah, in in a way, and I I think that they did look in themselves in the mirror a little bit and knew that, you know, there's a lot of guys on this team that have played a lot of football for Oklahoma, uh, whether it be, you know, a lot of snaps on the field or just being in the program. There's This isn't new to a lot of guys, and I think that that's one thing that you look on Saturday at as far as this is new to LSU in a way. Oh, yeah. And They've can never you, been. Can you catch yeah. them on the big stage like this? I mean, Will they be nervous? They haven't won games. Yeah, they. I mean, they and they played in an SEC championship and all that, but everything has been so good for LSU. We were talking about this last night at dinner. Like, you look up at the at the podium on uh, Tuesday, and it's the Broyles Award winner next to the Heisman winner next to the Blitnikoff winner, and then when they got off the stage, the Jim Thorpe winner. Oh, well, we came wish up. we had the Broyles Award winner. But. Oh yeah, that's right. No, it was Insmiger. I Which forgot about that. It's really weird when you want to uh, talk. To Brady. I keep thinking that Joe Brady was there. That that's completely wrong. But still, the point is, is Absolutely. everything has been aces for LSU yeah. this year, as opposed to Oklahoma, who has kind of been through a lot. I mean, they've they've been through a ton of shit, and they're still standing. So, uh, you know, I think the adversity part of it, and the you know the 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 basically being told that you don't deserve to be your angle, is interesting. But I still don't think that, that that's not going to account for 20 harder. points on Saturday. I, 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 I just I don't believe that. Well, I mean, let's face it. The, the reality is uh, OU is down a couple of key pieces on defense. It's going to be difficult for them. But LSU is going to make some – they're going to score some points in this game. Sure. Um, and, yep. I, you know, maybe this – maybe Lincoln sees this as kind of, you know, the team taking on Jalen Hurts' personality. Uh, or, you know, maybe that's just the way this works. But, you know, Baker had his personality, Kyler had his, and the team kind of, you know, rallied behind them, and, and this is just what he does. I mean, whatever the personality of the quarterback is, that's the, the shape of this team. Uh, but at the same time, Jalen Hurts, when the, when the pressure's really been on him and he's had to perform on the biggest stage, he had to go all the way back to Texas. But Texas, Baylor, twice... Uh, the Iowa State game. I mean, he's he's been, and a lot of people have said it. I mean, they've had to overcome Jalen Hurts at times this year. For sure, it, and 
the only I I don't want to say good good part of it. A lot of times it happens in the first half, and he writes himself and he gets it going in the second half. But you can't have any slip up Saturday. You can't afford that red zone turnover. You can't have two turnover that, deep in your own territory yeah. against this team. What the heck in it, uh, interception out of nowhere? Like you, you just can't do it. You can't bounce back as much as you've done it throughout the entire season. You cannot bounce back from that type of stuff we've, Saturday. You we, have to be perfect. We've kind of just kept waiting for it to catch up with them, haven't we? Yeah. At some point, it does. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised sorry, sorry it hasn't. Saying. I mean, you can't really put Kansas yeah. State on him because your defense was terrible that day. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's very fortunate to be. It's not. It's not it, he. He finishes second in the Heisman. I think a lot of people are like, "Well, he Jalen hurt <laughs> people I- idiots like Jim Mora think that like people are like, oh, he carried Oklahoma. No, Oklahoma carried him across the finish line to this playoff. Yeah, and I I think that nationally for a lot of people that obviously don't watch Oklahoma games, you look at the numbers, you look at him being second in the Heisman, and you think, wow, like this guy went to Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley's done it again and. In a way, that's right, but the other side of it is is they've gotten a lot of help out of a defense that is drastically improved. Top 25 in one year. It's crazy. Well, the other I, thing, I still the, can't believe the type of turnaround that they've made on that side of the ball. I think the other thing that you, know, you really question or you wonder about, like how tested is LSU coming into this? Because I know they played in the SEC. They won the SEC. Uh, you, you beat Alabama and Georgia and Auburn. But are those teams just okay teams? Like, I'm really going to be interested to see Baylor taking on Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. I, I want to see, because I don't know if Georgia will be able to score against their defense. I really don't. I, I've been sort of wondering if they peaked against Bama and now they're just kind of slowly falling off. You can beat up Georgia's offense and it makes you think your defense is good, but we know Georgia's offense is terrible. So I don't know if that's an, in, an indicator that that defense has turned a corner, which has really started to be the narrative down here the last couple of days, that the last two, three games for the Tigers' defense has shown you what this team is really about and not what they did during the first couple, first couple months of the season. Yeah, but what was their schedule? I mean, Alabama lit them up. They, they played well against Georgia, which so did Texas A&M. I mean... Everybody that plays Georgia comes out of that game thinking, oh, our defense is getting a lot better. Yeah, see Notre Dame as well. Yeah. I mean, what they, they, because they played Auburn early no, in last, the season, right? Correct. Yeah, they're, after Alabama, their last four games were at Old Miss, Arkansas, oh. A&M, oh. and yeah. then Georgia. They played some Oh, that yeah, their defense. Oh, wow. Believe. Their yeah, defense is awesome now. Their defense has turned to So corner. it's, oh, we have found, we found a chink in the armor there in the. <laughs> LSU's defense is really coming around narrative. Well, it always kind of goes back to that idea that it's like, well, A&M's in the SEC. They they have to be good. Vanderbilt's in the SEC. I cannot wait players. to see what happens with OSU and Texas A&M. And that will be before yeah. the yeah. Peach Bowl, so yeah, that Friday might night. give us an idea of what's what. Like, if OSU goes out there and Hubbard runs all over them, and, I mean... And, and and their receivers are just running free, and whoever's a, I can't believe that Spencer Sanders is going to play that much in that game. I think Drew Brown will I probably think play most. To, I don't even yeah. think is he is he practicing? Oh yeah, I don't even he's think back. He's practicing. Yeah, he's back. No, mm-hmm. Spencer Sanders is. Yeah. Okay, I didn't I didn't realize that. But I don't know. Uh, I, I haven't heard any reports on exactly. I talked to Scott Wright like one time uh, so far this week, yeah. and and I don't think they at that point they hadn't gotten any indication of how much he was doing in practice or what he was doing in practice. But I can't imagine that it's good. I mean, coming back that soon. Yeah. But I mean, no, that's gonna. I mean, that's gonna be really interesting to see what happens there. Because I just, I'm not buying into this. I think this is. I don't know. The more the week has gone on, the if it wasn't for the shock of the suspensions and having to work through that, and just all our time and effort being, I don't want to say wasted, but just, I mean, that's all that we did for like 72 straight hours. Like, we haven't even really yep. dissected this LSU team all that much. And the more you look at it, this the more I'm true. like, are they yeah. really Are they really as invincible as everybody's making them out to be? I do think that it can. It both can be true. It can be said that LSU is a 
very good offense, maybe borderline a great offense that Oklahoma has not seen yet as far as no. They the, haven't the seen a quarterback, quarterback like especially. Joe Burrow. Yeah. They haven't seen a wide receiver especially. like Jamar Chase. Yeah. So, but the other side of that is, is can are they unstoppable? I don't think they're unstoppable. Like, I, I, I certainly don't think LSU is going to come in and score 55 points on Saturday. Um, you know, I, so I think that both can be true, that this is Oklahoma's biggest test. And in a way, LSU is a very damn good offense. This, like, there's a, there's a reason to be concerned about uh, Joe Burrow could shred Oklahoma absolutely. if they don't get after him a little right. bit. They absolutely. have to get no, some type right. of pressure on him. No, you're exactly right. And, and you know, being out there and seeing him at practice the other day and, and watching, you know, through uh, the lens of Eddie, uh, you know, just kind of seeing those guys on the defensive line, it became kind of real. By the way, the uh, so I was talking to somebody this morning about the black uh, lettering on the, uh, the, the jerseys. Numbers? I yep. still don't know, and, and the person I was talking to didn't really know and I thought I'd kind of had it figured out. Like, okay, this might be Alex Grinch's way of helmet stickers. Like, if you've played a certain percentage of snaps, you know, or or had a, these amount of big plays, then you get to wear black in practice. And if not, you wear red. And you need to get you need to do more to get on the field and make like that's kind of what I might think it is. But then I was rewatching the video this morning. I noticed like Q Overton had red numbers on. It's like. He's had a really good year, so I don't, I don't. My theory might be shot to hell now. <laughs> it might just be a, one of those things that's just a coincidence. I don't know if there is any reason for it. Maybe the players just got to choose. Maybe they had those, those. Uh, but they have Jordan on the. Were, the, were they? Were, were they at Jordan School when they had the, uh, the protests? No. No, no, not yet. That was just it within the what the last three years. The, I, I, for some reason, I feel like I've seen them. The, I don't think those things are new. The black numbers. I, I feel like they've worn those before. There's just no reasoning behind it. That's that's the thing. There's no rhyme or reason Brian why one Asaboa, guy has. It. Yeah, yeah, like now he's wear he's wearing a black one, and it's like he hasn't. He done rarely anything plays anymore yeah. since Kansas State. Since the Kansas State game. So, kind of weird. Yeah. So I, it was just it was one of those stupid things that everybody talks about, and you're just kind of like, yeah, yeah, I wonder what, I wonder why. But anyway, um, no, but I'm sitting there watching the defensive linemen and watching everybody run by, and I'm like, and we kind of, you know, Bob has written about it, and I, I wrote about it on after day one, and you start putting these names together, and you're like, why couldn't Marcus Stripling have a big game? Why couldn't, why couldn't yeah. you know Nick Benito and David Aguebu step up and do something really? you know, good off the edge. And, you know, why Why couldn't, you know, LaRon Stokes finally start doing a little bit more? And if Neville just did this, and if Jalen Redmond has a really good It's like you start trying to piece together, and then Lincoln's talking about, you know, it's not just about one guy and this and that. And there are a lot of people that have tackles for loss and sacks. It's not like last year where you just, if it wasn't coming from, you know, it, it just wasn't coming from anywhere consistently. I know. I was trying to think who. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you know what the, you'd have to go back to the oboe years to say yeah. if it didn't come from him, it didn't yep. come from anywhere. You know what the name that uh, Alex Grinch mentioned yesterday that I really hadn't thought about a lot, but he has made a sack in the last two games. Is Isaiah Thomas? Yeah, yeah. he played those two two plays against Baylor. The first was the sack. The second was that touchdown. But there's no no doubt that. Thomas and, and Stripling are going to get a lot of run. I I think you what well, you got to probably start with Redmond and Stokes to, together, and then it's going to be Stripling and and Thomas. They're going to have to carry the load whenever those guys need a breather or if they're just not playing well. Yeah. The problem is LSU's offensive line is great. I mean, they're not just good. They're not just average. They're great. Joe Moore. Yeah. They're 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 great, but. At the same time, they've given up 29 sacks this year. Yeah, that's true. I did see that stat the other day. Which is just surprising. Now, I guess that's where you could argue there's better defensive tackles in the country. I think we all know where they go to play. Yeah. So, I mean, they have been going against, even if some teams are, you know, kind of shit as far as the SEC goes, they still got some pretty damn good players on their defensive line. I will say this, though, and, and I saw a thread on the board. I didn't want to really get involved, um, but it, it's kind of one of these things. Uh, it's it's the crutch 
and I'm going to get myself in trouble here, but I don't care because I believe this is the truth. One of the biggest crutches, it's just like play calling on the offensive side of the ball. It's like when things aren't going wrong, it's like, ah, oh, the play calling is terrible. I can tell before the snap if guy's gonna if he's going to call a run or a pass. Yes, that's a redneck voice. Go F yourself, all right? Uh, but the other, but on defense, the, the crutch to me is with fans is always, he needs to blitz, better blitz. If he doesn't blitz, there's no chance. Like, but Alex Grinch is not a guy that just blitzes. He, he doesn't just, he's not nuts about blitzing. I mean, you'll see he a lot of. He doesn't have a blitzing fetish like Manny Diaz. No, certainly saying? not. Yeah. Uh, and that's usually who I bring up is Manny Diaz in terms of guys that just blitz all out all the time. And look how that's worked out for Manny. He, well, he's a head coach now. Right. A shitty head coach. No, I, they, they have to generate something up front, and those guys have to be, you know, they have to make plays. I, I think that it is going to be interesting to see when they do dial up some blitzes, you have to get home. You have yes. to be able to make those, you have to execute those plays. Like, I, I think that that's, that's how you get nine sacks in a game against Texas. Yeah, they've done a good job. You hit job every time that you blitz. Using Pat Pat Fields in yeah. in that role. He's, done, he's really hit when they've tried to bring it, but you you wonder the type of confidence, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about this more, but defensive line so much, that safety position without Turner Yell, you assume it's Justin Broyles, but if it's not Broyles, if he can't bring it, if he doesn't deliver Saturday, you wonder how that's going to change the game plan. I I get the sense, just from listening to Lincoln and, and a little bit of, of Grinch, <clears throat> and Bob, I know you were over there on the rider side with him, but I get the sense they're both kind of setting this up to where they're trying to get some of these young guys to finally step up, to finally show that they can go in. But like they're trying to squeeze anything they can out of a Jeremiah Cradell uh, or a Woody Washington just to say, look, this thing is there for you. Just show us that you want to yep. take it. Yep, and I, I was right on board with you after Lincoln. But, yeah, on the writer's side, talking to Grinch, he just made it so clear that the guys who would be playing have had a lot of reps. Yeah, now, I, I don't do, know if Grinch, I do, I, that, if, You had if, that in your story, yeah. If, if Grinch believes practice reps are the same for him, then it's it, it, it doesn't matter. But if he means game reps – then Cradell and Washington simply don't have yeah. it. If he's talking about experimenting with Jaden Davis and doing something weird like that, that could be something. But I, I think they're going to roll with Broyles initially, and that's definitely what it, it felt like when we were watching practice for those 15 minutes. And then it's going to be up to Justin's performance to dictate how Alex coaches the rest of that game. Yeah, you're right. You had that quote of his in, in one of your stories, and that quote was basically, look, we're rolling with the guys that we've been rolling with because nobody else has proven that they're worthy. And that's what I try to tell people, you know, that we're asking and getting fired up about, oh, well, all they didn't have a whole lot of bowl practices. That's another thing. Like, they didn't have a month to prepare for this thing. They basically had two weeks. And the coach is out on the road, so it's not like the coaches were in there it was it was pro, it was like a makeshift crew that was kind of in in there with them that first week, while the coaches were trying to finish off recruiting because that's all they were really concerned about and that's and that's probably what they all they should have been concerned about. So that's it's not, where I find this. I, I was just gonna say that's where this I kind of find it interesting as far as like the matchup between coaches in this game. Like maybe I'm just a complete homer, but. <laughs> I feel like Lincoln Wright, if it comes down to X's and O's, which in a way it plays a little small part, I guess, but in a way I, I feel like Oklahoma has an advantage there, do they not? And I feel like they have nothing that snuck up on them, at least since they've been here, right? It's not Marquise Brown, will he or won't he? It's not Baker getting sick the week of the game and sure. you can't prepare for it. Mm -hmm. As much as you hate the suspensions, you hate losing Turner Yell, you've had time to come up with some sort of plan to go at it. And there's nothing that we've heard so far through the first part of this week that says something has changed. Like, oh, man, this guy's out that they didn't see coming. So the, if, if Riley's as good as we all believe he can be, this is his moment to sh sort of show it. And it looks like you're, un you're undermanned and he brings his best, his best plan yet.
You know, it's funny the connections in this game because Dave Aranda was on Mike Leach's first staff as a GA. Uh, yep. You know, he and Bill Bedenboe and Lincoln Riley all know each other very well. Um, what was Alex Grinch's connection to the LSU staff? Was it with M. Sminger? Or was it to. Break? He had I was some. talking about this last night. He had some uh, connection to somebody. Yeah, Aranda has all those connections back to Bedenboe. It was. Uh, uh, God, oh, uh, Joe Burrow and Alex Grinch were in Columbus together for a yeah. for a spring. For, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the Buckeyes. Yep. Well, were you thinking of something else? I can't remember if it was. Yeah, I don't. Coach with somebody or yeah, I I, I think it might have been the Joe Burrow thing, but uh, I hell I didn't realize that Aranda was roommates with Tom Herman in college. The story. That's what it was. That hell. yeah, that was the one that Eddie was. <laughs> Yeah, I, I forgot about that. Man, you should try and find a bar near the LSU hotel and just hope maybe he shows up and get him drunk and see if you can get some dirt. Oh, I'm sure that he has a bunch of dirt <laughs> on uh, his former roommate. By the way, I want to remind you guys that, uh, of course, this podcast uh, brought to you by MidFirst Bank. Uh, if you go to midfirstbank.com slash U40, that's midfirstbank slash mid, midfirstbank.com slash U40, you can sign up for the OU Rewards credit card. They are the exclusive provider of the OU credit card. Uh, apply today and you can get uh, 15,000 bonus points, which essentially gives you $150 uh, credit when you spend $1,000 in the first 90 days of your card. Also, every time... Uh, you will make a qualifying purchase. You're registered for a chance to win the ultimate game day experience. Uh, every qualifying purchase that you make with your OU Rewards credit card earns you a chance to win the ultimate game day experience with VIP tickets to a football or basketball game plus $500. So also 0% uh, APR for the first year. And uh, uh, you get the card, apply today. Got the giant OU logo on that. Everybody knows you're a huge Sooner fan every time. Uh, you whip that bad boy out to make a purchase. So thanks to MidFirst Bank for being the title sponsor of the Unofficial 40. Really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate them being a part of it and allowing us to do this each and every week. All right. Uh, by the way, uh, Josh is not here. Uh, and it's not Josh's fault. It's not like Josh wouldn't do this. But uh, the way that we're set up in our studio, we couldn't have... Josh uses the same equipment to to join us that the guys are having to use from Atlanta. So we only have... We don't have unlimited funds. We, there, there are limits to what we can do. So, Josh, Josh was the odd man out today, and he was happy to take it. So, I can't imagine how exhausted he must be right now. Oh, no. I would imagine it has been a hell of a morning at the McQuishan household, <laughs> running around with uh, Layla and uh, Laney. Which, by the way, I want to throw this out there. I am not a heartless bastard that will not tell everyone Merry Christmas. I just know that Josh loves to tell everyone Merry Christmas. So we let Josh be the spokesperson yep. <laughs> on Christmas or major oh, holidays board. in general. Any, yes. He's, he wants those likes. Josh gets, gets those likes. Oh. He, get, he gets up. He gets That's up. an accusation, I think. <laughs> I mean, I, I got up at like five. By the way, Eddie, I am proud of you. Uh, you did something that's very hard to do because you wake up early every morning. You're used to that. Somehow you slept for a very long time today. It's very hard to do that. Uh, it was not very hard for me. I, I didn't, I didn't wake up one for one second. That's amazing. Yeah, it was, it was nice. We got to back at it tomorrow though. Just kind of set the stage for tomorrow. Busy it's day it's tomorrow. media day tomorrow down here. So, uh, LSU will go first. Oklahoma will be up second. Are you are uh, you uh, are you doing your accusatory interview with Jacob Phillips tomorrow? Right, <laughs> Jacob I don't know. Phillips I'm, time. I, I think he would remember me. Uh, I we'll carry it, it live. Be... I wish I could like pipe in. Like I wish I could. Help. I mean, I wish we could do an interview from studio. Put a headset on. Hey, man, I I have somebody that needs to talk to. Yes, you. exactly. Just light him up. <laughs> just. <laughs> It, just go to I, town. I don't. Just the way that this whole thing has gone this week, I don't think that anything just groundbreaking is going to come out of media day tomorrow. I, I'll tell you, readers. The one thing I'm really looking to do is talk to those five star freshmen. We obviously we don't get a chance to throughout the entire season. 
I want to hear no, with Spencer Bridges. Rattler, with Theo Weiss, with Jaden Hazelwood. We have not heard yet, for those wondering, if Ronnie Perkins, Ramondre Stevenson, or Trajan Bridges will be available tomorrow. That, As of yesterday, that had not been determined by OU. So that'll be another layer if those three end up being I would To me, that would be the way. shocker of all shockers if OU yeah, re- le- re- allowed those guys to be available. Yes. But maybe it's Lincoln saying, hey, you messed up. You're going to be scout team the entire week, first off. And now you're going to have to answer the question. I'm not airing your dirty laundry, but you're going to have to answer when people ask. By the way, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head this off at the pass before Eddie starts screaming at the olds. Just let Lincoln Riley make this decision. If he wants to bring them along and use them as practice players, who cares? Who are you to come out here and say, oh, he shouldn't do that. They're, they're, they're being punished. They should be at home thinking about what they did. Like, that's fine. You want to be old school. It's not your team. All right? Just Lincoln gets to do what he wants to do. If he wants to use them as practice players, I'm fine with it. Just, just, just knock that stuff out. Just, just keep it to yourself. I'd play him. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the worst that could happen? They just You'd vacate forfeit. the wins yeah. in five years. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It would just be one win. I mean, I guess. That's that big of a deal. I, I bet Lincoln wouldn't play him if he if it meant that he couldn't promote that he's been to so many playoffs on social media to recruits. Oh yeah, that's probably true. They'd have to go back and change some graphics. I would, I would think. Would yeah. he still get his his uh, his bonuses too? He's got a bunch of bonuses. That's a good question. The last couple of weeks. So, so anyway, it just it, it it's it it it's been an interesting week. I, I the other side of it too is that the from a media angle, there are just not a lot of people down here. I, I think not there are a yet. lot of people coming in tonight. Exactly. Since there's just that one day really availability yesterday i think people are like well if i want to talk to those guys i'll just get them on the 26th so people spend spend time they want to spend and then I, they're Christmas be with their families yeah. boat, boatload of people coming in this we were this evening we were not giving bob that option we forced him to come even though it's <laughs> newborns at home and we'll probably be probably be uh i don't know, have daddy for issues life. for life yep, because of this be scarred <laughs> Yeah. You are there. I'm sure. You know what the good thing is, Bob? Them. Though Norman has a, its own strip club, so she can stay close to home. <laughs> there's there's going to be a lot of uh, dumbass. Well, I know from one television station coming in from Oklahoma City that will try and ruin interviews. From Oklahoma City? Mm-hmm. You talking about your partners, Dylan and Nate? No. Oh, okay. No. Ruin? Yeah, they don't ruin. They're not going to ruin anything. No, I like those guys a lot. But what is uh, something about tomorrow, too? Usually it's an hour. It's only 45 minutes. So it's a condensed time. And when you're trying to talk to the freshmen, and you got to talk TJ Pledger, you got to talk Justin Broyles, a lot of people you want to try to hit. It's, it's going to be a pretty frantic 45 minutes, so don't be surprised if we're not updating the board at, at all. I mean, we will come back after and give you everything, but – that's really like no moments to, to, to waste in a setting like that. By the way, is it really bad that once I eliminated Channel 4, there were still two I was unsure about if those were the ones that were going to ruin? And then, I, and then it hit me. I know exactly what station you're talking about. But there yeah. was another one that was in question. No. So I think there's a possibility like those you have guys two too. stations. Not no, Channel like 5, no. See, now I've eliminated everybody except for two. <laughs> Dean Blevins is going to come ruin a lot of interviews tomorrow. All right. <laughs> God damn it. We got through it. It's what he does, though. Well, Everybody you just stay away I'm from him. Just it. stay away from him. That's pretty easy to do on a 26th media day. There's no doubt about that. I, I feel bad for you guys because you won't get to see. I know you're a married man, Bob, but. God, I always love seeing Lauren Rutledge in person. And Maria Taylor, too. Well, that's creepy. That's creepy, too. Well, she's a mom now. That's not creepy. That's normal. (laughs) Shut up, Eddie. They're hot. So, yeah, today nothing going on. So there's not going to be any any interviews, anything like that. They're giving 
the media down. There, there will be practicing today. Don't worry, people who are mad that, you know, the suspended players made the trip. They are practicing on Jesus' birthday. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what time that's at. Yeah, it'll. I imagine it'll probably be about the same time every day. I would think that they'd want to keep it kind of some continuity there. Uh, so Jalen Hurts, I think, you know, it's been kind of interesting because uh, has he had to tell anyone like Heisman's over with? Oh yeah, I'm not doing those questions yeah, he, anymore. Oh yeah, it's, oh you practice from three to five today. Yeah, I mean, Hurts is all just it about the team the journey is not over yet it's not about me uh, if you, unprecedented if you it's haven't heard it because you don't come to norman for the last three four months there's gonna be a lot of national people they're gonna be what what <laughs> this is how he, this is how he does it yeah i mean it's <laughs> i'm sure well dan woken was the first of those to do it but i'm sure he's yeah, gonna he's, he, he's gonna and he he does not want to do the uh, redemption story from Alabama and getting you know beat out by Tua. Like, if you're coming to town to try and do that story with Jalen, he is not going to help you. No, it's not something that, in a way, I think he's a little embarrassed about that. I would be about the way that everything ended. I mean, it, let's be honest. It, he got beat out. He got he got taken out of a national championship game that they won, basically because he wasn't playing. After I mean, and and that happened a year after he led them to the go ahead score, in the the year before against uh, Deshaun Watson with like two minutes left in the game. Yeah, and then yeah, Clemson came right people, down the field and 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 won it on a lot Alabama's of people, myself defense. Included, yeah, a lot of people, myself included, forget about that. Uh, that that he did do that. And there was a trick play on that drive and stuff, but he still, you know, he still had to, he, he made the run. He had to the sco- run. Yeah, he, he had, had the, the run. it was like a 40-yard run or something. I mean, it was close. It was a great run. Yeah, to, to give him a three-point lead. They should have won a national and, championship with him at quarterback if their defense could have gotten he, one stop. It, it's so weird because he was the quarterback there and they didn't win, and then he was the quarterback when he got benched and they did win. So, you know, he brings up time and time again as being Deshaun Watson in 2015. Yeah, he has mentioned that almost as much as anything when he was a mid-year enrollee, so he was practicing for the the, the bowl practices as Deshaun Watson and how much it helped Bama because that was the game Bama beat Clemson the first time mm-hmm. when they had Jay Barker, whoever is their quarterback. Oh boy, is it is, is it Coker? Yeah, it was no. Coker. Jake Coker was their what? quarterback. Yes. Yeah. Oh. And he's like selling insurance now or something. That was a really good story. Yeah, I, think, I think he is. From, that, that was an athletic article. Yeah, I that was a really nice, nice story from la- last year. So I, I mean, we'll find out on uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire too. It sounds like he hasn't practiced since he's been out here. Um, you know, the first update that Ed Orgeron gave was that he was off of crutches and off of the scooter. But at some point, you have to practice too. So yeah, I, I just don't know how you go from. Walking around on crutches or using a scooter for mobilization, and then all of a sudden you go run for 200 yards. I I don't know how you make that uh that type of recovery in what five days, but um you know I would be I it, it seems like just the vibe around here is people would be surprised if he plays on Saturday. Yeah, and I I think it is that deal though too. Like if you're LSU, yes, he will help us win, and and may I mean, do you dress him out? It, right, I, I think see, I think you have to kind of watch how how it goes. You have to have the discipline as a as a as a football team to to make that decision. Like if he can go, he's gonna go. If he can't go, if we're afraid of putting him out there, we we can't put him out there when we're down by twenty one in the third quarter. I mean, like that that is like the most callous decision that you could ever make. I mean, that's essentially. <laughs> You're like, yeah, well, let's just throw his throw his season away. Throw, you know, yeah. If he tears oh, a hamstring, so. so be it. You know, we won't need I don't him think next we'll game. Do that. He'll either be in or out. Yeah, I would either. I'd hate to see that he dressed and then he didn't play, and they waited to find out how the game went. Because if he couldn't start, if you can't start, you shouldn't be dressing. 
I think there's zero percent chance that happens. And I'd say that for any team in America. But then you get a Marquise Brown where you do start and you just can't do anything. Yeah, and yeah. It ends up throwing off the entire rhythm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and it was. It's very obvious that that thing was a lot worse than. Um, Maybe we even speculated at oh, yeah. uh, at this time a year ago. Well, remember though, last how year how badly he was hurt. Remember the last year, we all felt like, oh, he's probably done. And I think we kind of took the approach of, you know, we, we don't count on it. Like, I know everybody wants to know how he's doing, if he can play, and and Lincoln kept telling us like he hasn't practiced. So like from the Big Twelve game until the boy, like the first time he practiced was when they got to. Boca Raton, yeah, and that and we and watched like him for our fifteen. His... We watched him for our fifteen minute viewing period, and we were like, "Well, it looks like he can play, but yeah, he wasn't going a hundred percent full speed game speed with all the adrenaline running." When that happened, he couldn't do it. Yeah, he was he was a gear too slow. There's no doubt about that. But yeah, I mean, you would love it if they tried to play Clyde Hilaire and and it just he hampered the offense for a, for a quarter or a half. But I mean, I watched that Texas game. I mean, they they did a pretty good job against him. They were able to, you know, get pressure in the backfield, and they uh, it was a who was their uh, forty six their linebacker. Is a big big guy, um, but he was kind of just drilling him on those flat passes out of the backfield. That was kind of their one game all year that was they kind of got out of there alive. I yeah, think. that's that's the way yeah, you probably can, killed the rest of their uh, season. Describe too. it. Yeah, you talking about Texas? No, I'm talking about LSU. Oh yeah, they, yeah. Like that was the one game that they were really pushed. And again, didn't Texas score with like? They had 40 the, seconds left, yeah. so it was really a 14-point game. But. Well, that. remember, there was there was two inside-the-five-yard line possessions that Texas didn't score on in that game, too. Yeah, they, right. what they do, they turned it over on downs, and then they had a turnover. They had, they had a, Ingram, the running back dropped, dropped, dropped it. Yeah, it was wide open. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So I think they showed the camera on Sam Ellinger's mom, and it was not pretty. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, there's... It's that we can talk about this all you want, and we can talk about Lincoln and the way he's preparing, and you know the intensity or the business-like approach. What it comes down to is, you know, that game's going to kick off, and OU is going to play. I I don't. I mean, like I've never thought that OU just played terrible to start a game this year. Like they've ne- they've not really. Like you go back to last year, that Texas Tech game. I don't know. They they shit on themselves in Waco, did they not? Didn't they get up though? I mean, didn't they? I know they started they up, up three. It was three, three to nothing. Three nothing. They settled for a field goal on yeah. the that's opening three. drive, and then what all of a sudden about? it's twenty-eight to three. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Same thing with Kansas State, though. In a way, it, but they got a ten nothing in that ten one. nothing there, yeah. and you're and they're driving to go up seventeen to nothing, and you have to settle for another field goal. Like settling for, you cannot settle for field goals because uh, that's what Oklahoma wants you to do defensively is. They want LSU to settle for field goals. Like I, I think that they I would consider that a win. I wonder how aggressive LSU will be. Because have they ever had to play against an offense that they had to keep up the pace? Yeah. And that they would go. Well, they got the big lead that. against or, Alabama, and then they they let them right. back in. But that's about the only time I can remember them really having to. I mean, Texas was a little bit. I mean, that was that stressed them a little bit, and they did settle for some field goals early in that one. They've got a good kicker, a really good. He's from uh, McKinney, Texas, I think. Oh, she's kicker. Yeah, I don't know that. So yeah, I mean, I mean, fast starts, all that stuff. I don't know. I mean, if you're if you're Oklahoma and you win the toss, do you take the ball? Or do you go on defense? I'd go on defense. I'm always I always like getting the ball in the second half. That's just a it yeah. feels personal good, preference. And then you see what happened when you did it last year against Bama and they go right down the field. They go line right here. down the field. The fumble overturned at the goal line, so you don't get that. And that was huge. Yep. There were a couple real big plays early in, in that one that kind of told the story. 
It's definitely a tough decision, I think, as to how you want to go about that. Because then if you take the ball first and you go three and out, now you're screwing yourself for the second half. Sure. I know OU's offensive line isn't as good, but I'm sure it'll be nice that, that LSU doesn't have anybody quite like a Quinn and Williams. Because he blew up a whole bunch of plays early in that oh, game. Oh, yeah. No, that, he was, he's one of those guys that was a for sure difference maker up front for them. So, I mean, and, and that's the other thing. Like, how is, how is, like, LSU came in the first day and they talked so much about OU's running game. Like, how successful is Kennedy Brooks? Can he be against this, this LSU defense? That's a, that's a major question mark heading into this game. How much do you think they're going to play uh, TJ Pledger? As little as possible. You think? I mean, I think Just he'll because get... They don't, because they don't trust him? I mean, you know Lincoln. I mean, he didn't play, he didn't, yeah. he didn't play Jaden Hazelwood at all against Texas. Yeah. I mean, he shrinks his roster when they play in big games. It's, it's true. We, we've talked about that before. I, You know, I, I think that we sit around and we're trying to figure out ways that they're going to... Um, in a way, I guess, change what they've been doing over the last month and a half. But maybe we're all kind of looking too much into it. I, yeah. I, like, I, but, I, Carrie, I, I don't think that this team can just line up and beat LSU by running it down their throats. I, it's just not going to happen. Jalen Hurts has to make some plays through the air. No, I he think you're right. He has to hit a Charleston Rambo. He has to hit a C.D. Lamb. Are they going to basically take Lamb out of the game? Who's going to be that guy? And, I, you know, I maybe I just fall back on this too often, but – how does an Austin Stogner, how does a Braden Willis, who are guys that have catches in the last month, how do they form into this uh, game plan? Or where? what is their part in this game plan? Uh, Jeremiah Hall, kind of the same vein as those guys. They've they've made big plays when Oklahoma's needed it through the passing game, particularly down in Waco. I mean, they had two of the three touchdowns. Well, I or, think, or three touch, they had three touchdowns combined, didn't they? Yep. I think there are other guys besides CeeDee Lamb and Charleston Rambo that Lincoln Riley really trusts in this offense. And I think... Lee Morris Nick is definitely Bassley, one of them. One. I'd yep. say Lee Morris is number one. Okay. Yeah. And and you put Bas- Nick Basquin I, has made a lot of plays here of the last. Yeah. I mean, that was a hell of a catch in the Big Twelve Championship game. Yeah. The, for the touchdown. But yeah, yeah I, I would put him just under Lee Morris. I th- Lincoln really likes Jeremiah Hall, and he really trusts Braden Willis. He doesn't have a ton of trust in Austin Stogner yet, and and I think that's just because he's young. He's a freshman. He doesn't have a lot of trust in Jaden Hazelwood. That's that's been pretty clear. Yeah. But I mean, those are guys. I mean, uh, once you get past CD and Rambo, that's still a nice list of guys to, to use as playmakers. And uh, uh, Lee Morris, Nick Basquin, Braden Willis, Jeremiah Hall, uh, Ad Miller wasn't practicing yesterday. Dennis Simmons has a lot of trust in him, even though we don't. Uh, but I'll tell you this: I think Ad Miller's suspended anyway, so I don't think it matters. Um, and we never reported that, but that was one of the guys that we kept hearing. Um, yeah, and he's—I mean, he's—we go out to practice. You, I, I, anybody that watched the video yesterday, he wasn't practicing. He was in street clothes, so and all by himself, just kind of wandering. But you know what? I thought around. about that. I thought about that. Like, if we had reported Ad Miller was suspended, people would have been like, "Oh God, Ad Miller, we're screwed." But like, people watch that video yesterday and they see he's in street clothes and they're like, "That's eh, Ad Miller. We don't need him." Yeah. I guarantee you 100% that's how it would have played out. Yes, probably so. Well, but if it leads to Lamb needing a breather so Theo Weiss can come in. I'm all for it, yeah. I think that's a a win. That's a win for a lot of people, isn't (laughs) it? Yes, I agree 100%. That's that's addition by subtraction right there. (laughs) Take that option away from Dennis Simmons, and I'm fine with it. It's a kind of a question. I mean... Six. It's it's a question that can't be answered, but this has to be the most confident uh, three game stretch in Oklahoma defense has played in five years, six years, seven years. Like how long has it been since they've gone into a bowl game and you're thinking this is a defense that could match up? I mean, guys, that go back to that Baylor game. That was an incredible performance. Other than absolutely giving up the big plays to Zeno. Um, <laughs> You take those two big plays out of there, and it was yeah, just sometimes, incredible. You know what? Sometimes they make incredible throws, and Zeno did that a couple times. And that's the problem. Joe Burrow can do that in spades over and over sure. and over again. So sure, that's sure, your sure, challenge sure. here. 
But, I mean, that defense was unbelievable. I mean, still, like, we haven't, it's been such a whirlwind. I don't think that we've been able to take the time to appreciate how magnificent that defensive performance was in the Big 12 championship. Yeah, we're even go all the way back to the 16 plays in Waco in the second half. I mean, or the Oklahoma was, State performance defensively. That was out. I mean, Parnell Motley in that game was outstanding. Parnell Motley was outstanding. Uh, not to mention, you held Chuba Hubbard to, you know, who I think a lot of people feel like is the best running back in the country. Just over 100 yards. Yeah. Nothing. What was it, 108 or yards something, Bob? in the second half. Yeah, I mean, it was, it, it was an incredible performance. They, they have stopped the run better than I thought that they would. I, and, you know, I, how much does Ronnie Perkins play into that? Is, uh, he plays you know, into we'll it. But, on Saturday. Yeah, he plays into it. But I'm I'm kind of buying into you know Lincoln uh, talking about all the other guys that they have. They're available. I mean, there are a lot of people that have played. Really, now you lose to Aaron Turner. Yell it chips away a little bit at your confidence in the defense. But right. after you've already lost yep. Ronnie Perkins, so I don't the know. Defensive I mean, line was the only spot the rotations actually stayed consistent. They kept doing it throughout the season, where they bailed on some of the others like. Kenneth Murray and Brian Mead was no longer a thing. Asamoah, Deshaun White was no longer a thing. But defensive line, they stuck with it. All those guys are as fresh as they possibly can be at this point. Which I think that's why, and I can understand why fans want to make or want to hope that there's some type of, uh, you know, either youngster that they give a shot to or that they move, you know, somebody like, I mean, the problem with Jaden Davis moving over is, He's probably been the worst tackling corner on the roster. Definitely I mean, during the last month. Yeah. yeah so, sure. he, he, I don't see how he's a help at safety for you, other than just covering people. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I can see why people want to see something else. But, I, I mean, I just think Justin Broyles is the best. He's the best option that they have. He just is. He's the most experienced on and, and this type of stage. And look, I think if OU loses this game after it's over, we're going to be saying, God, they just couldn't afford, have afforded to lose DeLarian Turner yell, and they did. Yeah. You want to, you want to, I, I can't even say like make up for any wrongs. I, I don't know if Justin Bros has necessarily wronged anybody, but if you want to take advantage of an opportunity, here you go. This is your stage. If you want to prove that you can be a, uh, you know, a guy at Oklahoma that right. is going to be counted on in the future. No better opportunity than uh, than what he will have on Saturday. Exactly. If you're offended by your playing time, you think yeah. that the new you new, think that you're being screwed or new regime didn't give you a fair fair shake. Here is your chance. And the other thing I want to say is, stop it with the well. Sometimes you just don't know until you put them in the game how they're going to play. No, that's not how it works at OU. That's not how it works anywhere. Kids that's, just don't magically figure it out. It, when you put them on the field, when they can't do anything in practice the right way. And Alex I'm Grinch wants not. to put them on the field. We've said that time and time again. He wants to rotate players. He does it at the defensive line position all the time. He does. He did it with the linebacker, with Brian Mead, when people were like, what the hell are you doing taking Kenneth Murray out of the game? He wants to rotate. He wants to play Woody Washington. He wants to play Jeremiah Cradell. They just haven't given him a reason to play him. Yeah. And, I, you know, if you're still questioning – the decision making for Alex Grinch, you're the idiot. <laughs> you need to look in the mirror. People are there's gonna be so some it, people that are gonna be really mad at us on the on the boards. Well, it's just I mean, it's true though. I, how could you sit around and question what Alex Grinch is doing right now? Because you think you know how to fix everything and you think I mean there are people that just think they know how to how to do everything. People yeah. tell us how to That's do okay. our jobs all the time. I tell people how to do their jobs too. So yeah. it uh, it makes the world go round. But I, you know, I, I am excited though for the game on Saturday, just from a aspect of, uh, in 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 kind of a a really weird, messed up way. I still can't believe that Oklahoma was able to pull this off. With as far as this uh, is the stopgap year. Yeah, what they That's what, what going into the year, if you would have said that OU was gonna. Put put down all this numbers in front of me, offense, defense, uh, everything that goes into it. It's it, it's still a little surprising, and I would I would die on this hill that this is the best coaching job Lincoln Riley and his staff have done uh, since taking over for Bob. Uh, 
way back in 2016. Yeah, I mean, I just I think the main thing is, and I don't want to do the post mortem before the game is even played, but what Alex Grinch has brought to this program is exactly what it needed, and I think anyone that is still hung up on what's happened the last two years to each his own fine still howl against the moon you know that they that it wasn't done sooner but moving forward spencer rattler waiting in the wings all these five-star receivers uh you know a, a, we'll see what happens with running backs but a, a young offensive line that's only continued to recruit better and better I this program is taking another step because of Alex no, Grinch. Would it be fair to say they're closing the gap? Yep, they're closing the gap between, uh, you know, I, I think what a lot of people view as the upper echelon teams in Oklahoma. Certainly, in that they're in that discussion, they're just not on that on top on that on that. Um, there's another step to be made, I guess, and the only way you do that is by winning a game. In the college football playoff, I, you have to you have to make that step, yeah. and I I think that uh, you know it, it, it's kind of I, I you said it perfectly, Carrie, as far as recruiting, uh, everything that goes into a program getting to that level, they've checked all those boxes. Now you have to go out and win a football game, and obviously, um, you know, you have an opportunity on Saturday, and if it doesn't happen this year. I don't think that this thing's going anywhere anytime soon. Like they're own, they're getting better. I yeah, guess it just doesn't feel like it's say. it's their last chance. This is right. the only time. I feel like this is. Fall. I feel like this is like the start of it all. Kind of like this is part of the ascent in a way, uh, as far as getting players out on the field that can compete with the upper echelon teams of the world. And Oklahoma is right in there, step for step with all those schools as far as recruiting goes. You know what's funny is. Uh... Eddie has seen some of the new video stuff that we're working on, and uh, that's kind of why I'm here, is is we're working through a lot of that stuff, kind of getting this figured out. And we did the live uh, practice deal yesterday, and we can put graphics up on all the screen. And this this program that I have that does all titles and stuff, like it can go to Facebook and grab someone's post. And like if we were broadcasting live, like if we were if we were streaming... I can take someone's Facebook post and immediately Facebook post. Well, that's bad. Twitter. I can do Facebook too, but I can take a Twitter post, put it right up on the screen to where everybody can see it as we're broadcasting. I would, I would literally love to do a live stream game thread. Like I need to talk to the programmers at rivals to find out if we can do that for crimson corner threads, because my dream, Eddie, is for to be sitting here looking at the game thread on Saturday, before, like maybe the first quarter. Like, just let's say OU goes, they, they have a turnover on downs or something early in the game. I cannot wait for the first. I wish Lincoln Riley would just go to the Cowboys and get, the, get this over with post. Oh, that's definitely coming at some point. I mean, we had we had people trying to fire Lincoln Riley in the first half in Waco. Yeah, I can't imagine once the stakes are bigger what people are going to try and do. He's oh obviously God. been interviewing with Jerry this week instead of coaching his team. There's been there has been multiple games this year that just the the uh, the ups and downs. I I mean, we've talked about it time and time again, but that three week stretch of uh, Iowa State or Baylor, Iowa State, TCU was just is incredible. The, yeah. the ups and downs of those yeah. games, unbelievable. Uh, you know, and I, I guess in a, in a way, if you're an Oklahoma fan and you know they go on to, to win the game on Saturday, you start saying, oh well, maybe this team is just it's it's a destiny type thing. But at the same time, it's like they had to they had to bust their ass to win those games. And they had to come up with stops and they had to come up with. Uh, you know, collecting first downs to move the ball to get in position to win those games. So, it's uh, it, it's been a it's been a crazy year. I, I just again, I I can't believe that we're sitting here and talking about this on Christmas Day that Oklahoma's playing in another college football playoff. Well, and I'll say I, I, this is one point I didn't make, Bob. Um, 
you know, we talked about the direction, the the the. I don't know where the Oklahoma, the state of the union for Oklahoma football right now. Mm-hmm. Like I would even say, and yes, it is because Lincoln didn't make this change sooner on defense. But where this program is right now, if they somehow beat LSU in this game, with the future as bright as we think it is, to me, a win over LSU puts OU ahead of schedule of yep. where where they should be after making the change. Now, you could say, well, they should have been in this position last year. Like, if he would have just fired Mike after the Rose Bowl, then last year against Alabama, they would have had a better defense. They could have moved on and won it all then. Yes, you're exactly right. But he didn't make that decision. We're living in reality. And the reality is, if they beat LSU with a transfer quarterback, with a new defensive coordinator... They're ahead of schedule, and and yeah. then we'll see what happens to the national championship. But like, if Lincoln Riley wins a national championship this year with this team, they're looking at a potential dynasty of being the next dynasty. I don't, now I don't know what'll happen with Clemson. I just the thing about Oklahoma versus Clemson, if those really are going to become the two, and Ohio State's not going anywhere, but Clemson is so. Um, their their conference is an albatross around their neck. It just is. Well, in a way, could you say the same thing yeah, about could, the Big Twelve is it in not Oklahoma? The, same? the Big Big Twelve. The Big Twelve is way better than the ACC. I mean, it's not the most respected conference out there, but there's nobody like a Baylor in the SEC or in the ACC. Not even close. Like if. Big Big Twelve fans want Texas to be good. ACC fans say once Florida State gets back on track, yeah, and and that's what they need. They need Florida State will, and Miami be good to to get back. Which Miami's not going to do that the way they're headed, but Florida yeah. State could. If he already isn't, I would say you know if even if Oklahoma wins this game on Saturday, uh, Lincoln Riley will be. He'll be on top of the mountain as far as college football coaches go. I don't, I mean, well, it depends on if Dabo wins or not. Yeah. I think he and Ryan Day are neck and neck right now. It's kind of, it's interesting to look at these four teams and there's a lot of talk about LSU and rightfully so. Uh, You know, there's a good amount of talk about Ohio State and then... It's kind of like this. This the way that Clemson, in a way, I, like I, I don't agree with what Dabo has said as far as they're being like disrespected. No, it's just a, but it's an old loophole. In, in the same, in this, in the same vein, they are probably the least um, talked about team that has won two of the last three national championships in the history of college football. Like it's kind of like, yeah. I, LSU is going to win. Obviously, they you know they're going to go win by you hear some national analysts say four touchdowns or whatever. And then you talk about this Clemson Ohio State game. It's like I think Ohio State's going to win. And when in reality, it's like I think Clemson's just the flat out better football. Team. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's also it, it it is. And people say this all the time, and I hate admitting this, but Clemson like they're literally like Oklahoma State in terms of fan base. Like they're they're a they're not a blue blood. I mean, they're just, and I don't think they'll ever be considered that because I think they're. A, I, if if you have rotating blue bloods, and I I don't think that you do. They're like a modern new blood blue blood, if you will. Yeah, they're just not. I mean, look at their look at their recruiting class. They're turning away five stars. Yeah, no, they it's impressive what they're they doing. I'm just saying, from a interest standpoint, a national interest standpoint. They're not. They're not ever going to be a USC. They're not ever going to. They're not ever going to be someone that's that's appointment watching television for people on both coasts. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, it's probably true. Whereas Oklahoma's built that up. Ohio State's built that up. Hell, LSU. People just know they're LSU. They're you know they they got Tiger and they got that weird coach and they got the Heisman Trophy winner. People will tune in to watch LSU play. Yeah, LSU's the sexy program, but I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, for the average college football fan, they look at them and say, they won the SEC. They must be really damn good. Yeah. 
I can kind of that, just I'm, that narrative that's out there. It's like that's why a lot of national folks like laugh at the idea of Oklahoma oh, even yeah. competing in this game. That's why the, a lot of people like the Dan Wilkins of the world, who's kind of an idiot loser in himself. But <laughs> I, I think that he's, it, 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 that narrative is out there for a reason because Oklahoma hasn't gotten over that hump. Like, do you think that people would be looking at this game differently had Oklahoma won one of these games in the last? Yes. Three yeah, absolutely. Years? If, if they, they had finished Georgia, off Georgia, yes. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which is which is an insane way to look at it, considering. Nothing that has happened in the past should affect what's happening on Saturday. I mean, that's why people are saying they don't want OU in the playoff to begin with. They've right. had three, three right. chances. Which is just, it's an ins- it, that blows my mind that people that's sports like, fan say that. for you, though. I mean, it's just the way people are. Yeah. They just, they, they hear something enough. It's just like our message boards a lot of time. You hear something enough, you believe it. Yeah. Regardless if there's any, you know, basis in reality for that like if the stats don't really say that if people hear something just like you know the sec it just means more i mean like the sec wasn't a you know the it was probably the weakest the sec's been in in maybe five six years this year they're just so top heavy yeah and then everything just fell off a cliff i mean does anybody fire more coaches in the sec they have a lot of shitty teams. Do they what now? Delusional, too. Oh, like delu- you, you No, I said, do, does anybody <laughs> fire more coaches than the SEC? I said, it's because they oh, have a I lot of you. shitty teams every year. I'll, I'll die on this. So the Big 12 has better head coaches than the SEC by a long shot. Like, I don't even think that it's close. No, I think you're right. All right, boys. Um, Matt, Matt Rule would coach circles around Will Munchchamp. Oh, God, yeah. Mm-hmm. Coach, Matt Campbell coach would Blood. Coach circles. What are you talking about? Coach Blood Matt, the best. Matt Campbell's such a better football coach than Gus Malzahn, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to think about Gus Malzahn, to be honest with you. I mean, he's, he's that perfect. Auburn's kind of that perfect example of you know, you have all these tough losses nationally, and you think, well, that's that's hard to pull off all the, you know, beat all those teams. But the Auburn fans don't give a shit. Yeah, you're gonna win everything, or you're gonna get fired. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, Oklahoma State fans are kind of, you know, they're kind of sick of Gundy right now. Well, I I, I think Oklahoma State fans, in a a really weird, strange way, are going to. Feel a lot like Oklahoma fans, uh, you know. When Gundy finally moves on, which I don't know when that's going to be, but I don't think he'll move on. I think he'll just retire. I think he'll just he'll be like Bob yeah. Stoops yeah. and and Chris Peterson. He'll just say, "Okay, I've had I've made a lot of money. I've had enough. I've had enough coaching." Because he obviously doesn't love recruiting. No, I mean, he's got Gunner come come coming in now. The lasting impression from from the Bob era is just that sometimes it's okay after. 20 years to cut ties and everybody start fresh because that's sometimes that's what a program needs. Yeah. I think the best thing for some programs is cutting ties and, and getting healthier and getting um, younger in a way. I mean, that's what Iowa needs to do. Yeah. You can't, I, I in this day and age, you cannot. Longevity is almost the death of a program anymore. Like yeah, and you don't want Lincoln Riley. On... You don't want Lincoln Riley to go to Dallas. You don't want him to go to the to the Cleveland. But <laughs> I think even Lincoln Riley's got to know like how many years do I have at Oklahoma? Like he's probably got 10, 11 years and he's got to win as many, you know, if he's winning a whole lot of national championships, he can stay as long as he wants, but God, it's I mean, guys, it's going on 19 years since OU has won a national. There are there are people Kid, kids that root for Oklahoma football have never seen them win a national championship. Never, mm-hmm. It is it's always amazing. There's some kid that got a jersey. There's some kid today that got a uh, Jalen Hurts jersey or a Baker Mayfield jersey for Christmas. He's never seen Oklahoma win a national championship. Huh? When you think of how bad things got in the 90s, it only went from 85 to 2000. It was just 15 years. Mm-hmm. We're well past that. 
No. It's yeah, the longest stretch in history. Though, had to have felt like those mid nineties had to feel like forty years ago. Yeah, no, it uh, trust me. I was there. <laughs> the it ins did. and outs. <laughs> the parties that's on campus crazy. were really good though. No, that's that's fair. It's a good trade off. You could spend a lot more time planning your fraternity party when the team sucked like it did, because you knew you were gonna at least you're gonna entertain people or you're gonna make people happy one way or the other. Win or lose, we still booze, right? Isn't that the claim in, <laughs> yes. in some schools? Yes. I believe that. I've heard that f- phrase often. So All right, Phil. It's, it's, it's going to be has, fun. It's going to be a yeah. busy next three days. It's going to be a busy next three days. Uh, we'll have everything here from Atlanta. Uh, nothing today uh, as far as Wednesday goes uh, from Atlanta, but uh, they are on the practice field today from 3 to 5, and uh, it will be uh, it will be a busy 48 hours Really, it'd be a busy 24 hours on right. Thursday because Friday's a pretty – that's, a, a, that's joint, a lay low day. The, the joint press conference yeah. between the head head coaches, which is just kind of – It's a formality. National guys yeah. wanting to flex their muscle. Oh, that – we talked about this last night at dinner. And people will come in and I swear to God I'm going to be triggered when the <laughs> oh, first yeah. question is, <laughs> be how do you plan on uh, getting, getting around and not having Ronnie Perkins on the field? <laughs> it's like, well, God damn it. We've been talking about this for a week. And you come in and do this to us? Gosh. What is Jalen Hurts meant to your program? There you yeah, go. That, you like, know that's oh one of them. Oh, my God. That's one of them. Marty, you asked that on Monday. <laughs> well, no, Marty, would be, the question would be, Coach, I've talked to you exactly five times this week, and I have another question for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're probably Twice right. it was in your hotel room, once it was in my limo. He, yeah, Marty has had some. I've always been a defender of Marty. I like the guy, but his, uh, his, his, his I don't know what, the, he, he disappointed me on Monday. There's a lot of me in him. There was a, not, and not me. There's a lot of, uh, it was the f- douchey, flexy right question that he asked. Yeah. Of the players. I talked to your, I talked to Coach Riley yesterday. Like Marty, no shit. One, I saw it on ESPN. One, we talk to him every day. We're the players. Two, everybody else in this room is not impressed. They hate you even more now. Like, because <laughs> we didn't talk to Lincoln Riley yesterday. But you want to brag about how you're better than us? You think you're better than me? Screw you, Marty. Yeah, it was a bad look for a guy that usually looks pretty good. Anyway. Bob, any last words? Pause, uh, pause. I'm sh- have you FaceTimed with the family this morning for Christmas? Not yet. Did a bunch last couple days, but I not, mean, the good thing is Pearl yet. has no idea what's going on. She has no absolutely clue what's going no on. clue. Correct. <laughs> she probably won't next Christmas either. The one after that is where it gets sketchy. Now, did you do this the mall Santa picture? No, we did not. Okay, that's shocking. My mother-in-law hires a Santa oh my God. to show up for all the grandkids. And that's where the, the picture came from. If you're wondering, the yes. Santa comes, comes to the house. If you're wondering, yes, Bob is a gigolo. <laughs> He's, he uses his wife's uh, family's thunder tickets. They <laughs> hire a Santa. What else? What else? What other perks do you have that we haven't talked about? Use of a family car. No, I know that's not true because <laughs> we were involved in your last car buying fiasco. We finally <laughs> got him to get rid of the Saturn. A, oh my God. A, a, a nice 58-inch TV for Christmas. So I'm excited to put, put that up when I get home. They got you a 58-inch TV? They did. Oh my God. 4K and all it's that. It's present. Good. I don't know why you're so shocked. I'm like... I'm fired up to hang to mount mount that thing. Be able to watch oh, the that's championship on it. All right, guys, uh, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. the the work has been great. Looking forward to even more of it as we get headed for uh, uh, game day. And uh, Eddie and I will be bringing you more uh, as much live stuff as we can uh, while he is in uh, Atlanta. And, as long as it's legal, yes. <laughs> I don't know anything that we've done that's illegal. No one's told us not to do anything. I'm uh, I, I talk about stuff. You, the, you, the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, YouTube. yeah. 
I the the thing is, like that's what I hate about. And I ran into this with rivals camps, like when they play music in the background, you get slapped with like a copyright violation. Like I'm not putting the music in there; it's just playing in the stadium. Uh, but yeah, uh, Guns and Roses hit me with one. Meek Mill hit me with one. Uh, uh, Bell Biv DeVoe hit me with one. So yeah, that's why there's going to be no audio by the end of the day in our practice video from last night. Uh, so looking forward to dealing with that the rest of the week. Uh, but no, it's it's been a lot of fun. Looking forward to uh, moving forward here and covering this bowl game. And hey. Yeah, I think, guys, I think fans have to feel like we gave them a little bit of hope today. You certainly did. You're as optimistic as you've ever been about this game. I like what I'm hearing so far, and I don't like what I'm hearing so far. So, anyway. All right, well, I'll let you guys get to lunch. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back again, the Eskridge Lexus postgame show. Don't forget about that. Also, don't forget midfirst.com slash U40. That's midfirst.com slash U40. Appreciate the guys from Atlanta. We'll talk to them again a little bit later on after the game. Uh, Thanks for listening. We'll be back again next week right here on the Unofficial 40 podcast from Soonerscoop.com.